Hey yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video and here we are with part two of the best budget players. Now I technically already recorded this all in one shot a straight hour through and this is just getting thrown in right at the beginning of this. So sorry about that. If you guys haven't seen part one, make sure you go ahead and check out part one before watching this video. It'll give you guys a description of why we have these guys on the list right here there where they are if you guys have any other ideas for any other tier list drop them down in the comment section below love to talk to you guys about that and other ones you guys want to see i've been loving making these tier lists it's super fun you guys are obviously enjoying as well so it's been great and subscribe if you guys are new we have 84 percent of the people that are watching these videos not subscribed so please go down there and hit that subscribe button really mean a lot to me but uh yeah without further ado let's cut right back into the pre-recorded tier list uh where we start off with the uh airy belly i'll see y'all there um, next, we have Amethyst Avery Bradley, who I haven't checked his price recently, but I don't think it's going for quite a lot yet. Yeah, he's like 18k. Now, with Avery Bradley, the one thing that you get from him is amazing, and I mean amazing defense. And he also has half range center, which actually is pretty nice. But I think his jump shot is okay. <laughs> it's okay. And even then, he doesn't have a high interior defense which this year without people running the tall pgs yes you can play them on the perimeter but if they do get into the paint and start backing you down interior defense is something that really starts to kick in and help you out a lot and he also only has a 50 strength so the taller pgs can really back him down so i think while he does have amazing defense is really only for the you know normal point yards it's really not for the taller pgs so a good card but i think really just falls flat and i'm gonna have to throw him I'm gonna throw him seeds here. I'm only throwing him above Muhammad Abdul Rauf because he has better defense, but I, I'm really not a fan of the uh, Avery Bradley card. If I'm being, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, next we have the Pink Diamond Christian Lane, who came from the Campus Legends um, set. And if I'm being honest, I think every single card almost from the Campus Legends set is on this budget tier list because this it was such such a good and well-rounded um, little set but with christian laner he's going for somewhere around 30k or below mt and it's just great i mean i loved this christian laner card he's got a little bit of a slow and weird release but i love it and he's got half range he's just such a nice card he's a post god that can do everything well in there obviously he can spread the floor with that 96.3 and half range center got an amazing standing and driving dunk um great defense um slightly slow though which is what hurts him. I think if Christian Leitner was faster, I could throw him up into the S tier, you know, category. But, you know, if we knocked down LaMarcus Aldridge and uh, Chris Bosh for being slow, I think we got to knock these guys down. Now, the boost that Christian Leitner has over a guy like Chris Bosh or LaMarcus Aldridge is the fact that I'm pretty sure he does have clamps, which that's a big boost. I mean, that's something that at the, at the power forward or at center really helps now because we have a lot of speed boosting you know demigod centers which you definitely kind of need clamps to keep up with so with christian laner having that clamps boost i think it definitely throws him into the a tier category i'm trying to figure out if i want to throw him a plus tier i feel like i want to throw him a because again he's slow and he's a little bit more expensive without being that absolute amazing yeah we're gonna do it He's a great card, but for his price of budgetness, he's not, you know, absolutely unreal on that top level. So I think I'm going to throw him A. Solid card. I'm going to throw him A tier. Um, next, we have the Pink Diamond, Ralph Sampson, who actually came in the Campus Legends again. Now, Ralph Sampson is one of those cards who is, you know, 40 to 50K, just barely below our mark of budgetness for this list. But it's because he's 7 foot 4. That's what makes Ralph Sampson amazing. And he has 26 Hall of Fame badges that really help him out. And he is a defensive slash rebounding, like, god. He is basically, you know, like the pink diamond Shaq that we got, but with some better shooting and a better jump shot. So he's definitely one that I think a lot of people have flocked to because of that. I haven't really ran into him too much, and I'm kind of surprised as to why. Because I feel like Ralph Sampson is, like, he's a god, low-key. But I'm actually looking at him now, and I don't think he has clamps. I don't think he has clamps, but it actually hurts this Ralph Sampson. Yeah, I'm looking at him. He doesn't have clamps. So that's been a big thing with a lot of my centers is obviously it's not the most important, but it is something that I would like my centers to have. And 
I'm pretty sure he's also slow like Christian Laner. So I'm going to throw him again in A tier. I've done this with a lot of these cards. I think I've ranked these cards as well. And I think they always just end up next to each other. They're just, they're good cards, but they're things that, there are things that hurt them that knock them from being absolute top tier cards, which sucks because they have a lot of potential. Uh, next to Pink Diamond Grand Odin, another Campus Legends pack card. And this card actually gives a nice boost on a dynamic duo. And he's about 30, um, two ish k you know things like that and he's again seven foot center that really can do a lot another one of those you know post gods that can kind of spread the floor a little bit with the 79.3 has good dunking amazing defense and actually is the fastest of the three centers that we have again release is okay not one that i'm a fan of but he does have hall of fame clamps which boosts him above the other two guys and overall just a nice card i think I've been a little bit harsh on this Greg Odin card in the past before, but now that I'm looking at it, I feel like if I have Ralph Sampson slightly above Christian Leitner, I think I might have to have a Greg Odin slightly above the actually Ralph Sampson is 7-4. But you know, we're gonna leave it this way. Greg Odin, Ralph Sampson, Christian Leitner. If I I could sit here and actually look at all these cards and switch up so many things so many times, because a lot of these cards are just great. You know, they're just great. Uh, next, we have the Adam and Danny Manning. Again, Campus Legends, we're actually going to go through almost the entire one besides Jimmer and the two Opals. And Danny Manning is great because he's about 5k or below. You can get him for lower. And I think he's amazing. At both the small forward and the power forward, he basically is Lamar Odom. I mean, he's a reskinned Lamar Odom. And that yeah, that's really it. With more Hall of Fame badges. It has 22 Hall of Fame badges compared to Lamar Odom's 7 but the one thing that does hurt Danny Manning, in my opinion, is while he does have rebound chaser, his rebounding is a little low. It's a 65 offensive, 72 defensive. And that's one thing that I think hurts him if you run him at the power forward instead of at the small forward. But he still does grab a good bit of boards. But you can tell when you're going against somebody who does have, you know, Hall of Fame rebound chaser and a high rebounding, they will take it away from Danny Manning a lot. But again, because he is Lamar Odom with some juiced up stats i'm gonna have to throw him s tier i think it's a budget card for his price of 5k what you get in return and it's even lower closer to like 4k what you get in return is an amazing amazing six foot ten guy that is super cheesy and can really help you out i think i'm gonna throw him pretty high s tier and i also want to point out to all of you guys that have watched some of the other tier lists you might be thinking oh well you know these guys definitely aren't s tier if you know galaxy with tracy mcgrady is the rankings for these is purely based off of budget cards alone. We're talking about just budget cards acting as if none of the other cards are even existing. So just take that into account. Uh, next, we have the Diamond J. Williams, who is another card that got a dynamic duo and also got an Evo. And he's a really nice card. I think he could be better if he wasn't six foot two, but is a great shooter. Probably one of the better ones in the game. He has a great playmaking, can play some pretty good defense as well. And can still drive to the basket offensively a great card but again is six foot two so i do think it hurts him a bit but i do like him over the likes of muhammad abdul raouf and avery bradley i still think he's too short to really do anything so i'm still gonna throw him c tier but i'm gonna throw him high c tier next we have eric paschal's amethyst who is amazing i mean um about eight to nine kmt you probably could find him cheaper for like 7k if we're being honest and he does have one of the evos to go up to pink diamond which also is below 40k so you can pick all of these up for a great card and we're going to talk about him as if he is the pink diamond not the amethyst now he's a beast if we're being honest he gets gold range he gets 31 hall of fame badges all of which are absolutely insane he is a god on defense he's a god finishing the basket he can still play make well he can still you know do everything that he could at amethyst it's just all juiced up can still play well in the post a 94 3 which is crazy a 95 dropping dunk he can speed boost do everything crazy i think easily this eric pascal card at the small forward is an s plus tier category budget player absolutely insane and is one that I recommend like seriously I recommend um I think I'm gonna definitely have to throw him above uh Giannis but he's pretty even with Rudy Gay in my opinion um each have you know their own boosts but yeah really 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 nice card uh next we have the Ruby Dante DiVincenzo who is probably my favorite budget card in the game like I know there's a lot of um budget cards here but when it comes to you know budget cards that I think I use the most this Dante DiVincenzo card is it he's six foot four 
and obviously is great. Has seven Hall of Fame badges, but the one thing that you know gives him a little bit of boost is the fact that he does have a duo with another one of the budget players that we have on this list. Um, I think, I think, yeah, which is Mikhail Bridges. And that boost actually gives Dante DiVincenzo a few more Hall of Fame badges. I think it brings him up to um, three more. And it actually gives him Hall of Fame range extenders. So if we're talking about at that boost, I think he is an easy, easy S plus tier card with that boost. But again, he's a little bit outdated and he's only six foot four. But I think, yeah, with his gold range, with his good release, obviously the gold quick draw and his amazing defense. That's one thing that Dante DiVincenzo has amazing is really good defense and still slashing ability. I think I want to throw him S tier because I really, really like the card. And I feel like I'd probably, again, with the dynamic duo boost, he'd be somewhere up here. I think I'm going to throw him A plus tier because, again, lack of Hall of Fame badges. But if he had more, easily would be climbing the list. Uh, next, we have the Ruby Jarrett Culver, who we were talking about, you know, Dante DiVincenzo lacking size. <laughs> yep, Jarrett Culver's got that. He's six foot six. He's also cheaper at about one point, actually 1K MC. I just saw one for 1,000. And it's a great card. It has one extra Hall of Fame badge. And surprisingly, even though he was one of the better defenders in college, only has gold clamps and not the greatest of defense, but I'm pretty sure he has like the team mac base, which is the trait Burke base and can play great has a good shooting ability good dunking good playmaking um and again decent defense it's really not great but it's not bad i think um he could be a great card has great size but again with the lack of defense i'm gonna have to throw him in the a tier category i think he's great but again is lacking something um next we have the amethyst marvin bagley who again is up there with dante divincenzo as one of my favorite budget cards in the game and as people find it out, and as he gets a little bit rarer, his price has increased. It's around 9k MT, but he's still a great, and I mean a great card. 6 of 11 can do everything that you want with 15 Hall of Fame badges. Um, only thing that he's lacking for some people would be range extender, but has an 85 shot 3 and a great release, so it's really not a big deal. So near speed boosting, it could be insane. And if we get eventually a diamond Marvin Bagley, a pink diamond Marvin Bagley for whatever reason, oh man, oh man, these my team trades are going to be bad. I think... If he was had a faster speed with ball, I feel like he could be a little bit more cheesy and maybe some higher defense. I think he could, you know, end up in the S plus tier. But I'm gonna throw him easy S tier. I think as a power forward, he is absolutely insane. And one of the cards that, again, when it comes to budget squads, I throw every single time. Uh, next we have the Amethyst Isaac Bonga, one of the best PGs in the game because he's six foot eight. Now, Isaac Bonga is slowly losing his budget status because he went from about 5 KMT up to about 15 KMT, which again, big boost. But 6 for 8 has a nice Antoine Walker esque base, plays a great defense, can shoot the ball well with that base. It's super green like play amazing defense. I mean, amazing defense and can finish at the basket with ease. Some great dribbling animation. This is super cheesy. I mean, there's no question about it. Isaac Bonga is S plus tier. He's one of the best budget cards in the game and one of the best budget cards we've ever gotten. He seriously is just insane. Like insane. Uh, next, we picked up a Brandon Roy, who I actually really like, obviously because it's Brandon Roy, but I haven't been superbly impressed with him and he slowly has dropped in price, which obviously is helping him in his budget stat. It's about 30K MT. And again, it's actually 25K is what I'm saying right here, maybe even below. And what again helps him is he has that Trey Burke base and he's six foot six, which helps with the two guard, has 20 Hall of Fame badges, which is only one less than the Galaxy Opal that we got. Has Hall of Fame range and quick draw as well as clamps. Can do everything great, can finish inside amazing, can shoot the ball a great, can speed boost all that, play good defense, and is super fast, super nice. I'm gonna throw him up into the S plus tier, low S plus tier because he is a bit expensive, but I think. Again, once you get, you know, that Trey Burke base down, it's one of the best in the game. And it's real easy to kill it with this Brandon Roy. Uh, next, we have Diamond Clay Thompson, who had potential to be one of the best budget cards in the game when he first came out. And for some reason, he is goddamn like 15K, which makes no sense. But what what makes Clay Thompson possibly be one of the great cards is that he's six foot seven and can play the two. And he has 12 good gold badges like Quick Drop, but what really hurts this Clay Thompson card is it's just ah he's just ah you know he doesn't have great animations when it comes to dribbling in my opinion he's obviously got a great jump shot but yeah he's just very underwhelming he can't dunk he can't speed boost um 
Obviously, his defense is good, but his interior is a little bit low, and he's actually pretty slow as a two-wide. Only an 82 speed, a 78 speed wall, and an 82 acceleration, and that's really what hurts Clay. No dunking, no speed boosting ability at this point in the year, and he is slow. Has some bronze and silver badges, like Intimidator is silver, which just, why? And I think it really hurts this Clay Thompson card. I don't think he's bad enough to, you know, throw him at D. You know, me and he's a absolute stanker. You should never run him. Even though, actually, you know, I low-key feel like you should never run him. Um, but, I, I, again, I don't feel like there's any card who's absolutely, you know, stanker, awful, like, never should have on your squad. I, again, there's some people who will like him as a cheap Clay Thompson card. I definitely can see why you'd want him. But I'm going to throw him in the seats here. I'm just, I'm personally really not a big fan of him. Uh, next, we have Pink Diamond Dino Raja, who I haven't checked as of recently, but I might have to take him off the budget list because of the dynamic duos that came out. His price did increase quite a bit, but it looks like he's just, again, hovering around that 50k range. And again, remember all these prices are on PS4, by the way. So, again, he's like 58k. He's a little bit higher than we would want, but eventually, as time goes on, he will, you know, start to dip in price and go back to that 50k range. So, again, I'm going to have to take that into account, and the only thing that Dino Raja cannot do is shoot from deep with the range extender. I love all of his dribbling animations. I love his jump shot. Um, I love his defense. I love everything about this Dino Raja card. Dino is probably top five in my favorite cards in the entire game not just specifying budget cards the entire game dino raja is one of my favorite cards and one that i recommend everybody get and just try because he's just so glitchy i mean he's a better version of this Giannis, easily a better version of this Giannis. in my opinion he's a better version of the all-star Giannis. i absolutely love this card but again because he's out of our budget range i'm gonna throw him s tier instead of s plus tier like i want to throw him because of that again that just hurts him a little bit uh, in my opinion Next, we have Pink Diamond Mike Red. Great card. Overall, can do everything well. And the thing that makes this uh, Michael Red card great is, in my opinion, he's actually the alternative to one of the Galaxy Tables we got in the token market, which is Bradley Beal. I tell a lot of people if they want an alternative to that Galaxy Table Bradley Beal in the token market to go ahead and pick up this Michael Red. Michael Red has a great release, so you can green everything with him. He can play some great defense. Again, he's six foot six, so he's actually an inch taller than Bradley Beal. Has 37 Hall of Fame badges, which help him out great. Three and D is a god obviously with that 98 three-point shot he can still dunk with an 85 he can speed boost which is great and uh is nice and fast with the 95 speed i love this michael ray card but he is about 30 kmt again and you know we hurt um you know the status on some of these cards because of how expensive they are he is below 30k we're talking like you know 28k um so i think i definitely could run him up into the s plus tier um nice and easy for that um i'm uh yeah, we don't even have any two cards. We're going we're gonna to throw him S plus tier. I think Michael Red, if you get that jump shot down, could be one of the best cards in the game. Seriously, is amazing. Like, seriously, is amazing. Uh, next, we have Andrew Wiggins from the same flash packs as the um, Michael Red card. And Andrew Wiggins is actually great. The thing that helps him is that he's 6'8 at the two guard and has amazing defense. Has a good jump shot that you can green decently easy. Um, good playmaking, good finishing. Obviously, can do everything. But his dribbling animations are really bad. I mean, really bad, like, like, like really bad, and yeah, that tanks him for me. Uh, I'm gonna throw him eight tier. I think he's good because again, six foot eight at the two guard. But with how good I was hoping for him to be, I think he let me down a lot because of you know he has a bad has he's a bad moving behind the back and it really hurts him. I just don't feel like I can warrant putting him any higher. Uh, next we have Diamond Ray Allen, who is probably one of the best shooters in the game. Um, again. He's about 8k MT, and yeah, you gotta love him. Can play some good defense um, as Hall of Fame Ranger Center and Quick Draw. Has Hall of Fame clamps as well. 34 great gold badges. He can do everything amazing. Nice 95-3. Um, can't dunk the greatest and can't play the greatest defense. He can still play some defense, but it's not um, some top tier defense. So I think I'm gonna throw him A tier. I absolutely love him. I think he's a great card, but is lacking a few things. Um, from these same flashbacks, we have the Amethyst Muhammad Bamba, who is somewhere between 6 to 7 KMT, is 7 foot, and is a glitch. I mean, I had to rank him higher on my list. I think I moved him up to A tier on my centers list because I didn't realize that he had gold range extender, but he did. Um, so as a center that has range, has gold quick first step, can play amazing defense, you know, with that gold clamps and amazing you know, interior defense, he is a great card. 
Um, and if we're talking about budget cards, he is you know, an S to S plus tier card. And I think if we're looking at who we got with centers, as I don't, yeah, I think I, I think we can throw him S plus tier. I think we can very confidently throw Muhammad Bamba up at S plus tier. And there is one negative with Muhammad Bamba that I think some people haven't realized, including myself, is that he does not have a very high strength, which means he has a 60, which means a lot of the you know bigger, bulkier centers can back him down very easily, meaning you might want to throw him at the four if you know you're going up against Shaq or something like that, because you can definitely get pupped down low. So I would be very um, cautious about that and I guess as if we're ranking him as a center probably should throw him down to S plus I mean S but we're, we're, we're gonna leave him we're gonna leave him we're confident with our list we're confident with our rankings um next we have the diamond Brent Barry from the buzzer beaters set probably one of the better cards that we have budget wise in the game super cheap around 8 kmt and below has a pretty good release it's a little wonky that a lot of, a lot of people might not like the best but six foot seven at the two guard is great and is a three and d god that's what you want you know brent berry to do you want him to shoot a lot of threes play some good defense you know get that occasional dunk because he's still got a 97 driving dunk so he can still do it great and um can speed boost well everything that you would want slightly slow i would prefer some two guards with you know 90 plus in all of their speed categories brent berry is just barely missing that so i'm being a little picky but still a great card i think very solidly can go into the s tier category Next, we have a Diamond Russell Westbrook, who is a card that is so difficult to rank. Because if you look at him in terms of what his actual position is, a center power forward, he's he's trash. I mean, like, he is absolute shite. Like, he is awful. But if you look at him in terms of, if you pick this card up and run a triple threat, you're going to have one of the most fun times of your life. This card fixes all of the pink diamond russell westbrook you know flaws of not having you know hall of fame quick draw he has hall of fame range so he can do everything great he can drive to the basket like crazy he can rebound well which is crazy amazing playmaking amazing defense everything that that diamond russell westbrook needed in the boost he's got it but he's a center power forward now i'm purely going to rank this based off of his triple well okay i guess i have to take his triple threat performance into account as well as his position and i think i'm gonna throw him at a plus and here's the reason if we take into his actual position he's probably d tier if we take into account only triple threat he's s plus you know and i think that leaves a nice little middle tier into the a plus tier um some people might be mad that you know i put the worst the better version of russell westbrook out below with the other one but again he's a center power forward you can only really use him effectively in a triple threat which does hurt him a lot uh next we have pink diamond luol dang anybody that's watched the gameplay on it knows that i'm not a big fan of this card he is a three and d god at six foot nine with not a great jump shot because it's very slow i've had a lot of people go oh well this jump shot's money for me it works for me great so obviously there's a niche of people that it can work great for it but i'm throwing him b tier because i'm personally not very impressed with him. Uh, you know he's he's just he ain't it for me next we have the diamond nicholas batum who i think is a great card has a nice six foot nine size at the two guard which is just crazy and he's about um, 7 to 8 KMT. You probably can find him cheaper for around 6 if you really try hard enough to look for him. Has some great Hall of Fame badges, um, 26 of them to be exact. Can shoot the ball great, can play amazing defense, obviously at 6'9". Has Hall of Fame diamond, which is great, and just a great shooting ability. He's got a really nice release, but again, that's because I personally like it. It's going to be weird for some people. You know, it's akin to base 11, but for some reason, I like it a little bit better than base 11, if I'm being honest. It's just a great release, and he's got, you know, a nice 90 um, three-point shot. He can dunk the ball well, can play amazing defense as well, because if you guys haven't used Nicholas Batum, he really looks massive. His wingspan is absolutely crazy, and he's at 6'9", so it just helps him out a bunch. And I think for the price that you're picking him up at, He's got to be S plus tier. Easily got to be S plus tier. Uh, next, we have George Merson, a Jorge Merson, um, however the hell you say it. And um, he was a card I was actually pretty excited about because obviously, I mean, like seven foot seven, he was the cheese in the beginning of my team. But he's like 30 KMT. Again, he's seven foot seven, but I mean, he is god awfully slow. His three point shot is only a 64. And yeah, what. We were all excited about a George Merson, but he kind of just he left us flopping, and he's not very impressive. 
Um, I'm going to throw him B tier because he's expensive and you just you, you don't get a lot out of him. You know, I mean, obviously, he has the biggest player build in the entire game. I mean, he's the fattest, like, motherfucker in the game. But 30k and he really doesn't provide anything other than a lot of paint defense. I'm going to have to knock him a little bit lower if I'm being honest. Next, we have Diamond Catino Mobley, who I'm pretty sure came out the same time as George Merson. And actually, it's a pretty nice card, but again, he's one of those 3 and D kind of gods. He's 6 for 4 at the 2, which is actually pretty undersized, which isn't great. Um, but his 31 gold badges to help him out a lot, can play good defense, surprisingly, even though he has a 70 perimeter, which I think sometimes still gets exposed, so it's something you got to watch out for. I think he's a great card, but because of his size, I'm probably going to have to just keep him in the solid B tier category. It's just, he's not one that I'm really feeling. Six foot four at the two guard and even the three, it's, it's just really undersized. It's not something I'm really feeling. And again, that 70 perimeter defense, well, should be good when he has Hall of Fame clamps. Really just doesn't feel so, feel that way. Uh, next, we have Amethyst Nick Young. Slowly moving up in the ranks is one of my favorite budget cards. He's around 2 to 3k MT, has probably one of the best jump shots in the game, and he's 6 foot 7 at the 2. He can shoot the ball crazy with that half range center. He can still play some good defense with that Hall of Fame clamps, and overall, just a great card. Offensively, he puts in the work. 95 three point shot and a 95 dropping dunk. He can speed boost like crazy, but. What I was meaning like he could play good defense with the Hall of Fame clamps, he plays great perimeter defense, but he doesn't play great interior defense. He can't stop anybody inside. If you get caught on switches, like with the, with the power forward or the center of power forward, he's going to get pupped to get killed. Um, even with the small forward, sometimes he's going to get pupped, get killed. So it's a little bit difficult with him, but he's got nice speed. And again, slowly moving up in my ranks, but I think the fact that he has only perimeter defense, there's nothing else to really help him out. I'm going to have to throw him A plus tier. I think he's a very high A plus tier card. Um, he kind of reminds me of Draws and Petrovic, just leagues cheaper. So, again, great card, but one that personally, I'm going to have to knock a little bit lower. But I do love him. I do love him as a card. So, uh, don't don't forget that. He's still a card that I like. Uh, next, we have Diamond Tim Hardaway Jr., who is probably one of the better budget cards in the game, but his price has been a little fluctuating because there's not a lot of them up in the auction house anymore. But six foot six, J.R. Smith, you know, kind of animations with his jump shot, can play good defense, can shoot the ball well, and still drive to the basketball, get that 85 dropping dunk up in action. And honestly, is another one of those, you know, reminds me of Drazen Petrovic kind of things. Nick Young is basically this Tim Hardaway Jr., just cheaper. So I'm going to have to throw him a few notches below in the A plus tier is a great card. And I know a lot of people that love him and probably going to argue for him being higher on the list. But I think it's a nice, fair, solid ranking for him there. He's a great card. But again, some things are still, you know, I wish he had a little bit, a little bit more, you know, just like Nick Young. I wish they had, you know, better interior defense and stuff like that. Uh, next, we have Diamond Mikhail Bridges, who is the other part of that duo with Dante DiVincenzo, my mans. And his price has increased a little bit, again, around 40k because of the dynamic duo. But six foot seven, so at the small forward, has some pretty nice size. And the main thing that helps Mikhail Bridges is he's a 3 and D god. Like, that's literally what he is here for. Shoot the ball well with that 92 shot three. He can still dunk well at the 90. But he's here to play good defense and shoot the ball well, obviously. He has um, really good speed, but again, he's lacking that interior defense. So at the small forward, again, it's going to hurt him a little bit. I think that's something that I'm not the biggest fan of. And I think because of that, I feel like this Mikhail Bridges is like a worse version of this Gerald Wallace that's also more expensive. So I'm going to throw him down to the A tier. I feel like together with this duo, they both increase up you know, a tier. And... I think they're great together, but personally, I'm going to have to link that Mikhail Bridges is down a little bit. Great card, but missing a few things um, for his position, that is. Next, we have the Diamond Harry Giles, who is an amazing card, but there's one thing that's holding him back. He is a center and power forward without rebound chaser, something that a lot of people have overlooked for him. He's an amazing shooter, got a nice release, that's super money, has half range and half quick draw, has half dimer at the center power forward, which is great. And as a power forward, which is what I think you should run him at, he's great. But again, that no rebound chaser really hurts him in my opinion. He can still play good defense, but he just gets outboarded a lot. And I mean a lot. Now, I personally kind of would throw him B tier because I feel like, again, that no rebound chaser really hurts him. But 
Ugh. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna throw him B tier. I was gonna put him a little bit higher because I know a lot of people love him, but I'm gonna throw him B tier. I feel like he's good, but there's just, there's a, just a lot left to be desired because you just can't board at the four. You know, that's something that that hurts. Uh, next, we have Amethyst Javon Carter, who, when it comes to shorter guards, is actually pretty nice because his defense is out of this world at six foot two. Though, that's tough. I feel like again, he's just gonna have to fit in with the rest of these kind of shorter guys. Um, but I will say he's like Avery Bradley in a sense, but just some better shooting. Actually, not just some better shooting because his release is better. That is um, not because I guess he's better than Avery Bradley in a sense because they're basically the same card. Just Devon Carter has some better shooting. I think I'm going to throw Javon Carter a little bit above Avery Bradley because he's leagues cheaper, about six to seven KMT. But yeah, definitely not a bad card. Next, we have the Diamond Tracy McGrady, who is one of the cards that we got free from a locker code. And again, it's T Mac, has that Trey Burke base, absolutely money, some of the best animations of the game when it comes to dribbling. Can finish the ball well, shoot it great, and play some good defense as well. With obviously being a Diamond card, it's that was free from 2K. It's not the greatest, but he's definitely a really solid card that you can make it work. And I think. Your stats and badges wise, he's probably like an A tier card, but with those T Mac animations, I'm gonna throw him bottom A plus. Those T Mac animations, just, they're, they're too nice. Come on, they're, they're too nice. Um, next, we have the pink diamond. Um, who's that? Dennis Schroeder. Now, what's great about Dennis Schroeder is defense. I mean, he's had a great year this year in the actual NBA. I honestly, killed it. And his price is about 25 to 30k MC right now, which is actually pretty good but he has one big negative to him and that he is six foot one without range center and y'all know a pg without range center is really just dead in the water now i'm gonna throw him right in c tier with the rest of them but i think if i were to pick one of these guys to go play my pg out of these shorter guys i definitely think dennis schroeder or jay williams would probably be one of the ones that i pick Dennis Schroeder, because again, he can still play some good defense. He can play make well, still finish pretty nice. He just doesn't have that shooting. And sometimes, you know, you can get away with range extender not being there. And then Jay Williams, because he still can play some good defense and just shoot the lights out, like shoot the hell out the ball. So that's kind of why I have these guys um, up there. But again, they have to go C tier because they're just very undersized guards. And, you know, it, it's just, they're not helping themselves out being so short. I, I guess it wasn't really their fault, you know. <laughs> Next, we have the Diamond Grayson Allen, who I absolutely hate because he is a bitch. <laughs> I'm a Syracuse fan, so watching Grayson Allen in college was um, some of the worst times in my life. But I see one right now for 16K, and the other lowest are about 22. So you can get some snipes with this Grayson Allen card, if I'm being honest. Also has a diamond shoe. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pick that one up and snipe it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But Grayson Allen is 6'5 and has great size at the PG position. He has 26 Hall of Fame badges as well. He has Hall of Fame reigning center and clamps. He's got great defense. He's a great 3 and D sort of guy at the um, guard position. That's kind of what he was in college too if you watched him. A great 3 and D guy. He also has gold quick draw with a pretty nice release. And honestly, I feel like he's actually a really good card. I don't see a lot of people run him or even talk about him. But I think he's one that people should, you know, use more. When it comes to positions that he's good at though, this ranking is going to be based off of his PG position because that's one that I think you should run him at. And I think, honestly, Grayson Allen's a nice A tier card. I feel like he's actually really nice. You just gotta, you know, find out how to use him, um, get used to, you know, jump shots, stuff like that. And then he can really be nice for you, honestly. Um, next, we have the Diamond OG Ananobi, who is one of those budget beast cards that I think a lot of people need to pick up and are sleeping on. He's somewhere around 12k MT and is probably one of the best 3 and D cards in the game. Like, easily one of the best 3 and D cards in the game. His defense is absolutely insane. He's got great 6 foot 8 sides. So, at the small forward, he is going to be absolutely insane. As a 94 mid range, which helps him out a bunch, his defense is just otherworldly. He can still speed boost, he can still dunk with a 90 driving a dunk, and his speed is absolutely insane. OG Ananobi for me easily is a S tier card at the small forward, not the power forward. I think at the power forward, he's probably down to an A, but at the small forward, he is easily an S tier card that you can, you know, get up there and really kill it with. Um, next, we have the Diamond Craig Elo, who great 3 and D shooter, 6'5, um, decent release, decent everything, just not a bad card. And it's like, you know, 12, 13 KMT. 
Um, I know I'm going through him quick, but he, he doesn't really impress me. So I'm going to throw him C tier. You know, he doesn't really impress me. Not C tier, sorry, B tier. You know, he's good. He just, he doesn't woo me. He doesn't woo me, you know what I mean? So I'm going to throw him up there. I think he's better than the likes of, you know, Katina Mobley. But he's just not very um, impressive to me, I guess. Um, next, we have the Diamond Dennis Scott from the Buzzer Beater Packs, who is actually a really good card because, you know, six foot eight. He's just got that size. That's what makes him great at the two guard. And the reason he's great is because he's got a good jump shot base. Um, I'm forgetting which one it is, but a great jump shot base, which allows you to be real money and make almost every shot with him. And he has some good defense, again, because he's six foot eight and just has good stats for his defense as well. Um, has that uh, 94 perimeter, 92 steel, and an 80 interior, which is really good. He has great speed, but the one thing that hurts this Dennis Scott card for me personally is he... Wait, actually, I didn't think he had a driving dunk, but they actually gave him a driving dunk. I didn't think he had a high driving dunk, but apparently I'm wrong, and he has a good driving dunk. So, one of the main reasons I didn't really like him, they might have boosted it. It was a 64, I think, at first, but now it's an 80. So, with it being an 80, Dennis Smith... Welcome to the S tier of budget card. Look at that. 12k MT for a 6 foot 8 guy. Um, that's just amazing. He's basically like OG and an Obi that can play the two. So you gotta love that. Uh, next, we have Pink Diamond Earl Boinkins, who, if he was 6 foot 5, would be S plus tier. He has base, um, I'm pretty sure the Wade base or base 98. I think he actually has base 98, which is why he's so good. But, oh man, he has some of the best animations in the game. He's super fun and really could kill it. But, I mean, he's five foot five. I gotta throw him C tier. I'm not gonna throw him D tier because I feel like even though he's five five, you can still kill it with him. Just like Nate Robinson, you can still have some fun and still, you know, cheesy with him. And if they were taller, it could be so far up on the list. But you know, it hurts that um, they're a little bit lower in the uh, height category. <laughs> Next, we have the Diamond Joe Smith, who came from the Fan Favorites Series 2 packs. Is a great card. Uh, when it comes to his dribbling, he kind of he can't decide between if he wants to be a big man or if he wants to be a small forward. Has some animations that are great for the small forward, then some animations that are more of like, you know, slow big man. But you can pick him up for around 4 to 5k MT, which is awesome. And he has nice 6 foot 10 frame. Um, can do everything really well. Has Hoff Quick Draw, which is great. I'm pretty sure he has gold range as well. Um, so he can play good defense and can just do everything. Um, really nice. I mean, there's really not anything that this card can't do. Almost all of his stats are above 80, and the ones that aren't are like pass IQ. That way, he stays down at a diamond and not up to a pink diamond. So, I think again, he is this Lamar Odom, just a little bit better. Has some worse animations when it comes to dribbling, but better defense and better, you know, other abilities. So, I'm gonna throw him a little bit higher than Lamar Odom in the A plus tier category, but yeah, still a very, very, very solid card. Um, next, we have the Amethyst D. Wayne, who is also from the Prime, not the Prime, <laughs> the Fan Favorite Series 2. Um, about 2K MT. When I picked mine up, I got about 2.5. So, somewhere between there, you know, 2 to 3K MT. And it's a great card. Again, Dean Wade is missing some, you know, badges that would help him out immensely at the 3. He's in one of those cards who's... He's stuck in between that power forward, small forward kind of era. I mean, like, position-wise. And he's like... Really, he's good at both, but he's not insane at either one. Um, I think that was intentional by 2K, but has one of the best jump shots in the game. And then Triple Threat is seriously insane. Probably one of the better Triple Threat cards that you use. Nice size at 6'9". And honestly, I feel like if he had a little bit better defense, probably could be you know, up in the top tier category of cards. Everything's like, you know, around 85, which is great. But again, if it was up into that like 95 range, he would be amazing. And if he was a little bit faster. But still, think Dean Wade is a great card. Um, I'm going to throw him up into the A-plus tier. I'm not exactly sure where. We're getting a little crowded. But, um, ah, uh, boo. Yeah, I'm having trouble with this one, I guess. Yeah, we'll throw him above. We'll throw him up in the top of A-plus tier. Why not? Why not? We'll, we'll go ballsy with it. Uh, next, we have the spotlight, Sim James Posey, who, again, is a 3 and D card just like that of OG and Anobi or Mikael Bridges, but I think he's closer to that Mikael Bridges. I'm going to throw him equal. I know I have him above, but I have them in equal ranks. Uh, Mikael Bridges and Jericho, not Jericho, but Mikael Bridges and Jane Posey, nice and even. Uh, and then last but not least, we have the pink diamond, Jim Paxton Card. Did a gameplay on him. If you guys want to see that, go check it out. Um, actually is a really nice card. Absolutely love him. But again, he is sneaking into that barely under 50k category, which will hurt him quite a bit in this ranking. Um, again, has great size at six foot six and is absolutely amazing. One of the better cards in the game when it comes to, you know, 
budget PGs um, that are taller, I guess. Good release, amazing dribbling animations, good defense, and good finishing ability. I think has potential to be an S tier, but because of his price, I'm going to knock him down um, to the top of A+. So that does it for part two of the best budget players tier list. If you guys haven't seen part one, I guess it's a little late to tell you to watch it. So I don't even know why I started that. Um, but if you guys have any cards that I miss, make sure you guys drop them in down in the comment section below and make sure you guys tell me which tier list you guys want to see in the future. Remember, we have the two ideas of the Spotlight Historic and the Spotlight Sims that we can do. So let me know. I think it's a pretty nice list. Obviously, you guys are going to have some problems with it. Let me know those down in the comment section below. Love to talk to you guys about all of this. So wherever you guys are new on that road to 5.5k, remember 84% of you guys aren't subscribed. So make sure you go ahead and do that. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see y'all in the next video.